First, let me say in our context, uh, just transition to us means systems change. You know, not just transitioning to a uh, extraction-less economy, uh, but there's a whole system, or really an interlocking set of systems that we have to undo. Um, Jackson, Mississippi is a mid-sized town uh, in the United States. It sits on what was and is uh, Choctaw land. Um, colonized uh, by the United States, formally and officially, uh, 19, excuse me, 1800s. Uh, it was designed uh, to be a way station um, and initially a neutral spot uh, between the different economies that exist within the state, between the economy of the South, uh, which was much more oriented towards the coast and the production of sugar cane, and the economy of the North, which was much more focused and oriented around the production of cotton. Right uh, in the Delta, we all know the the Delta story, or most of us probably have heard some version of it about uh, King Cotton, uh, which is uh, the primary reason those two things, sugar and cotton, those are the two primary reasons why the vast majority of my ancestors who were Africans wind up in Mississippi in the first place. That's not our initial original home and we didn't ask to be there, right? So we were brought there to serve someone else's basic economy and their desires and wishes. Now, not much has really changed in the overall structure of the society in Mississippi. Uh, Jackson uh, is 80 to 85% black. So we have a numerical majority, which for us can translate sometimes into some political power as registered through the electoral process. It does not translate and has not translated into economic power. The vast majority of businesses, the vast majority of the capital in Jackson, Mississippi is still owned by a small number of white landlords and their families who've been basically in place and running a joint since around the, you know, the turn of the, the 18th century. Uh, so not much has fundamentally changed there, but that is a critical piece that we are trying to change. So there's, that is the dimension of the settler colonial aspect of what Mississippi is, right? It still is. Then there's capitalism, then there's patriarchy, then there's white supremacy, then there's heterosexism and how they all intertwine and interlock. All of this is what we're trying to basically negate and overthrow. And they all are intertwined, in our view, Capitalism is the one that kind of shapes and distorts all the rest of them, but they all have their own logic, their own dynamics, and one, they can exist without the other one necessarily existing. That's a critical point that we try to get everybody to understand, but try to fight them all at one time because we have to. It's not like I can choose to not fight uh, on the black front, it's not like I can not choose to fight on the labor front. I have to fight on all of them at the same time. Now, in our context, um, Let me say, we've really been trying to make this concept practical, as practical as possible. And it starts with, in part, the reality I think that Candy was, was describing, and how that looks in our community. Folks who were once chattel, meaning that we were once capital, kind of removed from that, then becoming wage slaves. And now, if you look at the vast majority of my community, about 50% of the community is unemployed and like permanently unemployed. And we're at a stage in the development of capitalism now where it's actually producing fewer and fewer jobs, right? More extractive wealth, more fictional wealth, but fewer and fewer jobs. In part because of automation, but also in part because of what people describe as globalization, which has been an ongoing process of European settler colonialism. So it's just a continuation of what's been going on the past 500 years. But we are now in a situation 
where in reality, most people re already survive through basic aspects of either the underground economy or some variant of a solidarity economy. The critical thing is it's just not organized. And a large portion of it is technically illegal. Okay, at least in our context, it will be illegal. So when we talk about building the social and solidarity economy, we're not talking about bringing something to Jackson or bringing something to our community. It already exists. The point is how do we create it in such a way that it actually empowers the people in the community and is not criminalized, or at least certain aspects are not criminalized. And then how do we make it so that it not only is just enabling people to get by by the day and day, but how do they begin to live healthy, thriving lives? That's the other critical piece. So I don't want my people to just eke out in existence. We've been doing that for far too long. I want them to thrive. And for that, I don't mean like have the newest car, have the newest TV, you know, have the newest whatever, you know, that they got on the market. That's not what I mean. I mean being healthy. Mississippi, by most registers of a state, is the most unhealthy state in the United States. Right? So we want to improve that. And not just for black people, but for everybody who lives there. Right? So we want to improve that. Now, how do you improve that? Creating more jobs is not necessarily the answer, as Candy was saying. And that's something that took us a bit to kind of struggle through, because one of the things that we were really articulating as cooperation in Jackson is, is we are in this kind of weird space as a movement organization of, on the one hand, trying to develop the, the productive forces because they, they're not that well developed within our community on a certain level to provide more jobs. But then we don't want to add to more pollution at the same time. So how do we wind up doing that? So we switched our thing to where we're job creators to we're quality of life enablers, right? Which is a different framework that we're struggling to try to you know, develop and, and, and put together. Now, in our community, it's kind of three fundamental things that we've been working on to make just transition tra concrete. And I'm going to try to speed it up. So the first thing, right now, uh, because Jackson, over the past 50 years, has been divested from and deindustrialized, de the land in our community is, is fairly cheap right now, like dirt cheap right now. It's not going to stay that way, and it's already increasing in part because of the speculation around our own efforts. But one of the main things that we've been doing is trying to uh, gain as much access to the land in the community as possible. Most of it we purchase, not all of it, just to be clear. Most of it we purchase, but not all of it. And the point of doing that is not so that we transfer ownership, per se, just to like the black community. We don't want to be settlers. So the critical thing is we want to decommodify it and make it a communal property. That is one way to get out of the, the settler colonial dynamic and try not to repeat it. It's not, the, it's not going to break that system, but it's a practice heading in that direction. So that's number one. Uh, and that also has a, the aspect of trying to stop gentrification and displacement in our community, which is a critical thing. Number two, uh, is gradually, systemically building uh, as carbon neutral and waste neutral cooperative enterprises and related systems as we can in our community. That's the second component. And the third component, I have to go because it's real fast, is what we call just transition policy. Now we exist in a, in a place in large part because of some of the movement efforts over the years where there are people who think like us who've been able to attain political power. So one of my you know, uh, friends and comrades is now the mayor of the city. Many of you may have heard about that, right? Um, it's still a big struggle, and there's still a lot of contradictions, and trying to manage the contradictions of, cha of capitalism is not easy, which is what you do as a mayor or a governor or a president. So it's not easy. There's a lot of challenges. And so in our context, we exist in a state wherein uh, it's dominated by some of the most reactionary political forces in the country. Our governor is a Tea Party member, and our state legislature is run by a Tea Party supermajority. So it's Trump on steroids, right? And that was there before Trump got elected. So the rest of the world is just getting a taste of what we've been living with all along. So within that context, we can't promote as hard of policy change as we would like. 
Reason being, they're doing preemptive law. So when we talk, talk about climate change and climate solutions, they come with, okay, we're going to block you from doing that. We'll ban it. So the critical thing that, given this, this juxtaposition of being able to have local kind of municipal power, but a, a, a state which is against that, we got to work very strategically. So the thing that we're really concentrating on in this just transition policy framework is changing the regulations within the municipality. Because that is something, at least on the front end, they can't change through the, through the legislative act. But ultimately, we're going to have to legislate this. So that fight is going to have to be waged, both on the municipality, but also within the state. And for us, we're very clear, our political work, political mission, is to take over the state, not just to take over the, the city. We can talk about that later, but I'll end now. Look at the time.